spent my teenage years in Birmingham. My stepdad got a job there. He's lovely, my stepdad. I never had anything to do with my real father. I've never even seen a photo. And my son when I was at school, I was 14. Like, was my first boyfriend and I suppose it was just one of them things. All your friends are supposedly doing it. You find out later none of them were. I kept it secret, I didn't tell anybody. I don't know what I thought I was gonna do. Squat and have a baby in a field. I just wore really baggy clothes. My mum says now that really she knew, but she didn't want to confront it. After I went back to school, I was, I was drinking a lot, going out. But like, having a baby, you feel a bit different, and I suppose I was just desperate to fit in. From there, it just all started to escalate. I remember going on trips with my friend, Michelle. We come out of King's Cross Station one day and there was this guy. I am looking at her face and she was shaking her head, but I just kind of arranged to meet him another time by myself. And that was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. He turned out to be the biggest crackhead going. He's the one what got me into all of this stuff. I didn't know about drugs. And I thought crackheads was only in America. Most of the girls that end up doing what I did, if you talk to them, there's, there's usually a man in the background somewhere. At first, um, what this guy made me do was meet with guys, walk them up the road, get the money off them and, and then run away. And this guy would show up and kind of save the day. It was all a bit of a laugh and a joke to begin with. And then I'd run off and the guy wouldn't be there. And, it's got to a point where it was easy just to do it. Less hassle. This guy would take the money and he'd use it to buy drugs. And we would share the drugs. Um, everywhere I went, he was there. He used to beat me up, moan that I didn't make enough money. I can remember, and this has always stuck with me, Standing outside King's Cross Station, this guy hovering around me. I had a black eye. This policeman had come and stood next to me. Um, I can remember him looking at me and me looking at him wishing he would do something. He even arrest me just to get me away. He just walked off. When you're doing it, it's like you just don't feel anything. As I've got older now and as things have settled down with me, I do feel a lot more disgust. Some of these guys were disgusting, fat and smelly and gross. Some of them were crazy. This guy kept me in his flat for days, was really threatening me with a knife, things like that. Uh, then I went to prison for like four months or something. I was 19 then. When I come out, I just seem to slip back into the same old pattern. I was taking heroin by that point, and that's what I think I've had the problem with ever since. I think probably 99% of girls that are out there are doing it for their drug habit. I've heard so many girls say, Oh God, I have so much money if I wasn't taking drugs. When you aren't taking them, you haven't got the motivation to do it. Like you aren't going to go out and sleep with strange guys for pair of new shoes or for McDonald's. Most of the punters approach you. A lot of them are curb crawlers. A lot of them are playing with themselves in the car. You get the old one, where I suppose you become friendly with them. Some of them are just lonely. All they want to do is talk or some of them just have problems meeting people. Aren't very good socially. You know what I mean? I went back to prison again. Got two years to serve one. I knew my life was going down the pan, but it's just like, how are you going to try and find a job? What are you going to tell people you've been doing for the past 10 years? The police are a lot more approachable now. and They want to help more. At one point I got arrested and they said either you can go to court or you can come to safe exit, do the appointments. 
And I thought, well, if I don't have to go to court and get more fines, I'll do it. But it's turned out to be really, really good. I got a flat in Hoxton. I've been there four years now. It's just made me feel so much better about myself. And I got my little dog. And uh, things have been really, really okay. I got onto methadone and I've got a doctor in a surgery right across the road from me. He's really supportive, really nice. So yeah, the past five years, things have got a lot better. But it's still very hard to break out of it all. Like, I still get times when I feel things are going bad and the first thing I fall back on is the drugs. I mean, I won't lie. And to get the drugs, you go back to doing all them things again. Sometimes I get out of someone's car and I think, God, it, I must just stink of them. You can smell them on you. And it's awful. It feels like there's a kind of... There's something stopping me making that final step. My son doesn't know about all of this, thank goodness. I do lie to him about money and stuff. I lie to my mum as well. A lot of the time I tell them I've got like bar jobs and stuff. They're just white lies, I don't think they're bad ones. Things is good, but even now, like with Christmas coming up, I think, God, I've got to get stuff for the kids. It's the first thing I go back to. Once you've stepped over that line, you've done it and survived, so you can do it again. I just want a normal life, really. Uh, I think just, um, just a quiet life. Meet a nice, quiet guy and get a nice, quiet job. Just perhaps, like, learn to drive. That's it, really.